Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dev here, and today I've got a very exciting video for you guys where we are going to be taking a look at the preview release of Arkle.io. Okay, so this is actually a pretty amazing web application that I've been playing around with. So as you can see here, I've got this sample file and it's the model of the Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright, but this is all modeled entirely on the web, okay? This is absolutely insane. It's kind of SketchUp and Revit on the web combined with a bit like Miro. But as you can see, it's got some really useful stuff for like architects. It's got a really clean user interface. They've got stuff that you probably want in terms of your project location, your units, different layers. The fact that you can even incorporate this into a web tool is absolutely insane. And this model is incredibly lightweight and it's a collaborative work environment, right? So the moment I copy and paste the link to someone, loads of people can uh, contribute to the file and work in it in real time. So yeah, this video is going to showcase the main features of Arkle.io. It's a tool that I recommend you guys try out. One thing I want to say though is that this is a preview release um, that's only been out for a week and there's already a few days taken out from that, right? So if you do want to try this tool, I recommend you try it out straight away because this kind of limited access ends on the 23rd of August in 2023. Okay, so what is Arkle? I guess the best way to explain it is that it's kind of Figma for architects or Figma for BIM, right? So you can all work on this uh, uh, file collaboratively online just by sending each other's links and you can edit it and comment on it. But I guess the main goal of it is to kind of simplify the workflow for early stage concept design. So they want a tool that's kind of simple and easy to use like SketchUp, has parametric modeling uh, like Revit, uh, a collaborative environment like Miro, and you're able to comment on stuff as if it was Bluebeam and create these nice presentation boards as if it was InDesign, right? And overall you have these features here which I recommend checking out down below. And I do think this software does actually have a place in the architectural workflow, right? It's really easy to use for modeling. And, you know, it's actually really easy to import context, something that I'll show you later on, but that's something I was very surprised with. And another thing that I'll show you later on, you can actually use these files on your phone and view it on the iPad, right? So I think that's an amazing feature. So yeah, before we get into this video, I just want to say, if you guys do enjoy the video, I'd very much appreciate it. Can you leave a like and let's get into it. Okay, so one thing I need you guys to know is that this isn't going to be a comprehensive guide to this tool at all because it's only out for a week. I didn't have much time to explore it, but I just wanted to show you guys the main highlights so you lots can start trying it out yourself, okay? So here, if we want to create a new project, I'm just going to go new project up here. There we go. Now, as soon as this is loaded, we have two tabs, right? The design tab and the construct tab. The design tab, I kind of associate it more to tools like SketchUp, right? Where you have this kind of freeform line that you can start putting on here. There we go. And then if I press escape, I can either use the push or pull tool, right? So if you use SketchUp, you're familiar with this. There we go. So I can even do something like three and I can start uh, editing the shape or I can even do something like a rectangle. The world is your limit. No, the sky is your limit. The world's your oyster. So here we can even do stuff like change the opacity to maybe 50%. If you want to model something like a panel, I guess you can even choose the extrude height or terms of what you want this color. So even for just basic massing or diagrams, this is really cool. And you can do this on the web already, right? So this is kind of freeform modeling stuff. You know, you can do stuff like Booleans and uh, other modeling stuff. If I don't cover anything in this video, I am going to link this guide to you where they've actually given a pretty comprehensive guide in terms of what you can expect. You know, all these things, parametric design, primitive shapes. Feel free to check it out. I'm going to link this in the description. But here, the main star of this is that if I delete this, if I go to the construct tab, the con if I go to the construct tab, this is more like Revit, okay? So here we have these walls and here I can start drawing a wall here right? And look at this. Just like Revit, we have types. So we can change our wall to be a thicker wall. We can even create our new types if we wanted. So say if I wanted something to be a bit more past a 12 inch generic wall, I can, I'm now in editing mode. So here I can do, let's say 15 inches. I'm not really sure how thick 15 inches is. Uh, so I'm just going to do something like 40. Okay, there we go. So now you can see it's gone a bit thicker and I have all these different types to choose from, even the types that I've created. And now look at this. I can even choose the wall to be something like four meters, right? So for those of you that have worked in Revit, this is going to be more familiar to you. And this is why I see this uh, tool being so useful because it's a mix between SketchUp and Revit. So over here, I can literally go to the door and look at that. We can place doors here, right? And these doors even have their own properties if we want to edit it um, because this is a kind of preview release. You know, I don't expect a lot of family types right now, uh, but you can just play with it. So here we can see if you want the wall to be on the inside or outside, if you wanted to edit the types, you know, all the stuff that's locked is obviously a type parameter. Again, if you're familiar with Revit. And now we can even do something like this. Well, look, even if I go here, we've got windows here, right? And over there, we can see the power of this tool already, right? The fact that we've got something like Revit in terms of this parametric capability on the web. And we've also got this kind of freeform thing like SketchUp where it's a bit more intuitive if you want to do some custom designs. You know, this software, because it is based on the web, you can't expect 
all of Revit to be on the web, right? There are some limitations, but to me, I see this tool having a lot of potential here. And of course, you do have stuff like elevations here. So you can do north, east, south, west, however you want to go. I believe you can even do your top view, create some plans. There we go. Um, I'm sure they're probably going to work on stuff like graphics in terms of, you know, the door swing or leaf. This is a preview release, but this is the main thing about this tool. One thing I want to show you guys as well is that you can obviously assign stuff to like different layers. So if I wanted to do here, wall, there we go, right? Wall and let's just do windows. But now if I select all of these walls, I'm holding shift and then layers, they're mixed. If I go to layers here, I'm going to choose all of these to be on wall, right? So now if I go to my layer panel here, look at that. If I turn off wall, ah, so the objects that they're hosting on will obviously go as well. So I can't really choose a layer for the door. I guess, unless I actually went here and said, nope, okay, there we go. So the door's got its own type of layer, I guess. So if I went here and if I drew this wall, there we go. This wall is on layer whatever. But if I turn off wall, look at that, those other ones are gone, right? So you can see why this is going to be quite useful. So you can see they've actually incorporated some really useful tools that we expect from SketchUp and Revit to have this really nice UI, right? This is quite intuitive. And even over here, you can see stuff like levels, the walls and all the stuff that are hosted within them. This is a bit more like Figma, I guess, or Photoshop, if you're probably used to it in terms of the way the layers stack, probably more like Figma, yeah. Um, and one more thing I wanna show you is that this program actually has levels, all right? So yeah, say if I wanted to actually host geometry from level one to level two, or say if I wanted my wall to start from level two, well, I can just create a new level here. As you can see, we're gonna call it level two, and the elevation is gonna be 10 meters high. There we go, I'm gonna hit create. And now if I hit show, I can see the level or hide it, yeah? And now if I go back to this wall here, I can choose when, when I'm creating my wall, I can choose whether I'm actually going to set it on active level one or level two. So if I do level two now, when I start drawing, look at that, these walls will now start drawing on level two. And if I done level one, there we go, we can see. So you, we can see what level they're gonna be drawn on. So very intuitive in terms of levels and, you know, geometry placement and the kind of UI that they've got on. I think this is pretty cool. And another feature that I want to show you that I was actually really surprised with how well works is the context tool, right? In terms of setting up the project. So if I delete, actually, I'm just gonna create a new project, back to projects, create a new one, right? Now over here, if you do wanna change stuff like your project units, you can obviously go project, units, millimeters, feet, or meters, equally so there. But let's say if we wanna set our project location, right? So if I go to project, location, now, if I go something, let's say King's Cross, right? London, uh, ah, King's Crescent. Okay. I mean, why not? Why not? So here we've got this and we can actually start importing our context now, right? Up to, up to a thousand meters, which is pretty insane. So now I'm just gonna leave it at 500. I'm gonna hit save. Now look at this. This is real time, right? Look what is imported for us. So it's even got our context for us, which is really cool. And it's even given us like this type of street map. So we can see what the road names are. We can see all of these objects. And as you can see, these buildings here, they're imported as this type of group. One reason why I really like this is because this is so easy to edit, right? Sometimes when you get context online, it's really annoying to edit. It all comes in as one mesh. But let's say if I just want to go here, I can just double click on this house and delete it and start drawing on it, right? So I know exactly the road's name and it's in just such simple geometry, right? And this is why I think this tool has so much potential and why I want you guys to try it to give these guys a bit of feedback, right? This context, I mean, it was imported really easy. You can edit it really easily. You can design stuff like in SketchUp, you can choose the graphics of some things. And of course you even have some parametric tools like you in Revit. Of course it isn't like a full fledged program, but the fact that you can even get this link, paste it to someone else is absolutely insane. So you can start collaborating together. And one thing I want to say is because this is a web-based tool, you can actually use it on your phone and on your iPad. I'm gonna talk that a bit later on. But in terms of the modeling stuff, uh, this is all I want to show you. If you did want to see what other people have done or the examples, if you just go back to my projects and you hit on examples here, I thought this was quite cool. So as you can see here, if I load this model, there we go. It is pretty fast. Like I'm not editing this video in terms of it. So now if I go here, look at this. This is a somewhat complex building for this program, but it's done like really nicely, right? They've even got all these different layers. The fact that you can edit this, delete it, it's essentially SketchUp modeling in the cloud, okay? Like, this is why I find it so cool. And of course, you have the stuff like the layers, all the stuff you want to do, the levels. I do recommend, like, trying, like, uh, opening these example files. I think it's pretty impressive what they've done. They've also got the Frank Lloyd uh, Wright Falling Water in there, which is pretty nice to see how it's happened. But now you can see how this will be useful in terms of a collaborative environment. 
And of course, if we go up here, we have stuff like uh, our levels here, uh, you know, level one, if you want to see the kind of floor plan for it, I guess. Uh, I don't think your graphics are gonna be as nice as like Revit graphics when it comes to stairs, but it's gonna be literally more literal to how you draw, like SketchUp and CAD, but you have stuff like elevations here. You do have stuff like boards. So here they've set up a few boards and over here, you know, you can save these views, right? So say if you wanted the level one floor plan there and the 3D view, you can literally just extract it straight from the software and then print it to a PDF, right? So it's pretty cool. I mean, I think this board work needs a little bit more tool compared to the modeling stuff. But like I said, this is in the one week beta release and I do recommend trying it out. Okay, so now we're gonna be looking at the boards and sheet tool. So here you've created a 3D model and let's say you wanna get some drawings out for it, uh, you know, to either print or comment on, right? So here, if you go to default board, you've got a board here. On boards, you can actually host sheets, right? So if I click on this new sheet icon, there we go, I can drag something, either create a custom size sheet, or if I go down here, you see I can choose an A1 drawing, right? And for those of you that haven't worked in software like Revit, I'm sure this setup isn't there. For, I don't think from SketchUp you can do something like this. Uh, maybe you can set up views, but I'm more familiar with Revit. But either way, say if I go to my 3D view here, and let's say I want to take these elevations and actually put it on a sheet. Well, I can go to my default board here, and you can see I've got sheet one here. And let's say if I drop the south elevation in there, there we go. And also let's say if I go back to that sheet, let's also drop the east elevation in there, right? So you can see I've got my building here. I can position it. I've got uh, stuff like the pen tool and text tool to either add something in case I want text there. There we go. And let's say here, if someone's like, hey, Dev, I want to move the board, right? One of your colleagues. Well, what they can do is if they go here, they've got this little comment icon and they can literally just go to here and they say, Dev, please. And you can also add people. Can you, you can see, Dev, please, can you move the door? There you go. And that's in there, right? So here you can see we've also got a comment icon on our board or sheet, which is great. And it says, Dev, can you please move the door? So at least if you're working on this model now, say if you're working on the 3D one, I know that maybe I want to push the door from there to there, maybe adjust the window as well. And now if I go back to my default board, look at that, the views on my sheet has updated, right? So this is something that they try and do in terms of the SketchUp and Revit approach. So obviously I'm showing you the quick basics of the tool. You know, if you do want to see this a bit more in depth, maybe try it yourself or ask a colleague, you know, maybe send them the link and maybe you lots can play with it together, right? So like I said, because this is a web-based tool, right? You can actually view this on your iPad or even on your phone. So here, this is the R Core Twitter page. And look at this, someone's viewing this on their iPhone, right? The actual heavy file that I've shown you before as the example. And the fact that you can look at this on your phone and even pan around it, I'm sure even if you wanted to, probably it's better on an iPad, you can even start creating shapes and actually contributing to this file. But the fact that you can actually inspect the 3D model, the actual live file from it, like not a web viewer on your phone is absolutely insane to me. So yeah, this is, is this just shows the power of the tool and having everything available online. And it's absolutely insane that they've managed to make this program this lightweight. And one last thing that I want to talk about in this video is the fact that right now in this current release, you aren't able to export the geometry into Revit. However, I do believe that they are working on this, right? So normally you'd be able to go file and then download it into a Revit format and then have a Revit importer, right? So if you go to the documents here, the ones that I linked below, you can see import and export, exports Revit, uh, essentially what they're saying is they are planning to have this in the future releases and I think that would be amazing to test and I do believe that they are you know this file would work pretty well with Revit uh, you probably have all of this stuff as generic models but I mean you have levels right which is a good thing and then even when you go on the construct tab if you create something like a wall here you know you have all these different types and of course you have stuff like Revit parameters so I do believe that will be a very useful feature uh, unfortunately it wasn't part of this release but they are going to hopefully incorporate into some of the next uh, previews that we see Another tool that I think would be good is a section tool or a section box tool, especially if you want to see some of the interior views of your building. I did speak to the owner about this. He said they are working on it. Unfortunately, it didn't make it into this copy of, you know, the public sharing tool. But overall, I am actually very impressed with this tool. I do see the potential for it. I am going to keep an eye out for it, um, you know, and all the other updates. If you guys did enjoy this video, I would very much appreciate it if you can leave a like. And one thing I want to say is thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers and 100 members on Discord, right? Uh, I really appreciate your support, guys. Uh, the Discord link's down below. Feel free to subscribe and like, and that's it. Take care, guys. Cheers.